So I would like to spend like a few minutes on the protobuf support in Flink. So protocol buffers are language neutral and platform neutral extensible mechanism for serializing structured data. And within PR2482, we added the support to Flink integration for data on Kafka that is either read or written, but in the format of protobuf. And what does it mean that we added the support? It means that if you are having a Flink job that reads or writes such data, we are able to extract the schema of such data so data sets. And uh, actually, I can show you another PR, which is not, oh, I cannot show. Uh, so another PR that uh, uh, was really helpful here uh, is a PR 24, 25, 38, I think. I hope you can see my screen. So it's the PR that changes the spec to allow nested tract field in schema data set facet. And it's important because so far we are able just to, within the schema facet to contain primitive types like the integer string. And within this change, we are able to store nested fields. So in this example, you see that the single field is of a type struct and uh, it has some other fields. So we can go deeper and deeper and deeper. There's another type like an array, uh, which so far we weren't able to, to, to contain within the schema. And the third one uh, is a map. So a map of uh, uh, key and values of different type. Uh, so that's a cool contribution, which was really useful for the protobuf stuff. So how is protobuf working? So if you're a developer, uh, then probably you create the proto files, which contain a definition of how your data is going to be structured. And based on this definition, you can generate the code in a language of your choice. So if you're a Flink developer, then by great chance, it's a Java. So these proto files are compiled into Java classes. And uh, if you write a Flink application, then if you write to Kafka, then you either serialize objects to protobuf, or if you read it, you deserialize it to protobuf classes. And this is where our integration comes into. So we look at the transformations and uh, if something serializes data, then we check what kind of objects are serialized and we check if the serialized class is a protobuf class, so a class generated by a protobuf. If it's a deserialized method, uh, then we check the return type and see if the return type is protobuf. And once we detect, hey, this class is generated by protobuf, uh, we can list its fields and translate them into schema facet. And while doing it, we are able to detect the nested uh, and more complex data types. And what I'm sharing on the screen is a protobuf test event that I'm using for integration test. So the integration test creates a Flink application that uh, is reading from uh, such uh, event types. And as you can see, it, create, it contains a map. It contains a repeated field. It should be somewhere. I cannot see it, but I checked before and it was here. So a repeated field in protobuf is kind of an array. Oh, here it is the repeated field. And it also contains some level of nesting. So there's some sub event and sub sub event to see if uh, we extract the schema facet correctly uh, for such complex types. Uh, yeah. So I think that's it to, to sum up. Uh, if you're using Flink, Flink integration and you're reading or writing data to Kafka that is serialized with protobuf, we are able now to extract uh, the schema facet really well. Uh, thank you. Do you have any questions?